there, is, there are basically two things that I want you to, to learn more or less. Um, first of all, that even though MATLAB is best used for numerical computations, um, we can actually do some symbolic manipulations. Uh, symbolic meaning if, uh, that, actually we will do that today, but it basically means if I write down f is equals x squared and I take the derivative of x squared, I, MATLAB will tell me it's two times x. Okay, so something that we can do on paper analytically. Um, there's a toolbox in MATLAB, the so-called symbolic math toolbox that can do this as well. There are other programs like Mathematica, which are much uh, more, or which are definitely more powerful than, Mat than MATLAB for such tasks. For us, this is sufficient. And the other very big uh, thing that I want you to get into is um, the new Keynesian model. Some of you maybe had or are, are already familiar with the, a basic new Keynesian model. If you had like an advanced macro course in your bachelor studies, um, most of you probably don't. Um, so I think that exercise uh, too, which is basically uh, I, I posted the solution both in the PDF, but also the video is basically exactly this exercise that I posted and I will post the steady state computations as a video as well. Um, just to get you behind the math of those models. And in my experience, um, like every, every year we do a Dynair summer school and when people all over the world come to the summer school, they're like PhD students, um, and they, they do struggle with the math behind these few models. Again, this course is not really about how you derive first order conditions, but you need to be aware that this is something that you need to do. And more difficult models require you to be more creative when deriving model equations. And this is, I, I always call this an art of DFG modeling. Like why do we use a CS function? Not because it looks so pretty, because it sometimes helps in deriving first order conditions. Sometimes, sometimes terms cancel out. And there are many people who are like experts in DFG modeling. And that's why we simply reuse those models and slightly adjust them. Okay, so, um, but the, the steps, the mathematical steps are often very similar, quite the same. So compare, if you compare this with last week, with the RBC model and the new Keynesian model, it's a bit harder because you have those probability that prices can adjust or not. So your objective functions do look a bit more difficult, but in a sense, you're still writing a Lagrangian and taking derivatives. So if you speak with someone who studies math, he's like, yeah, okay the solution exists or what, what do you want? But for us, we do want the exact equations, of course. So this is um, like to get you started with uh, the new Keynesian model, because this is like the, the cornerstone of more complicated models. And so you, you see how those equations look like. Okay, so this is, this is the, the whole exercise sheet. Um, now today, I actually want to start talking about what Dynair actually does. Let's, let's go back to our RBC model. Okay, so this is the, the mode file of Dynair um, that we saw uh, last week. Now, you declare variables, you might declare some local variables, some exogenous variables, some parameters. You calibrate those parameters, you introduce a couple of helper variables, that's the preprocessor then is going to text substitute into the equations. And then you have your actual model equations. And then right now we have not, oh, we have not done proximal yet, but we've just computed the steady state and maybe with initial values and try to find. So now I want to, to basically talk about what happens when, or what does Dynair actually do? Okay, so let's not do anything yet. Right, if you just run Dynair, there is a bunch of stuff happening in your work, working directory, right? There are a couple of folders created, which are not so important, but there's this plus folder. And pre-processing of a model 
is basically this driver function. Okay, and this creates a bunch of new variables. This is MATLAB code. Okay, so Dynero is a MATLAB toolbox. Um, and it provides names for all the, the variables, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, sets some options. Many of those options we, know we will never use. Um, and so on. And then no computations, but if we run steady, then there would be also a command, a function that would call the steady. And then Dynair also creates those dynamic and static files. And if you have a look here, Dynair computes something. Okay, and now, uh, and today I actually want to talk about what those files are, what, what is actually created here, because we will reuse those files all the time. Okay, so let's do the basic RBT model. Let's um, pre-process this ourselves in MATLAB, no dynamic. Okay, so what is actually under the hood happening? And there are basically now two parts that we need to do. First of all, we need to think about a way to store names, to create variables, count how many endogenous I have, count how many exogenous I have. So this is basically part one. Um, and then we will create those dynamic and those, um, those dynamic files. And at the heart of those files is actually the derivative of your model equations written out to script files. So at the heart, what we are, we are going to do is we are actually going to use the symbolic toolbox of MATLAB. Just let me give you a quick example. You can use you can use the symbolic toolbox if you have it installed to create symbolic variables. And then you can do stuff like my first model equations is something. Oh, my first model equation is something like alpha times x squared. My second model equation is something like x plus, I don't know, beta times y squared log of x minus exponential of x, whatever. And if you run this and have a look at f, you see that MATLAB writes it at the very first entry here. If you have numerical values, they always start right here. They're indented a bit. There's a tab, but those are symbolic variables. So, and then what I can do is, for instance, let me compute the Jacobian. So what is the derivative of alpha times x squared with respect to x, two times alpha times x, with respect to y, zero. And the second equation with respect to x is one plus beta times y squared times one over x minus exponential to x. So, and we will have 10 model equations, a hundred, a million, no, not a million, a thousand maybe. And doing this on, on paper is very difficult. Like the, you, you run into many errors, but the computer can do this for you. So maybe we can simply compute the Jacobian matrix. And here you can see that this is the matrix, the first equation, taking the derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to x, the second equation is below here, and with respect to y is down here. And what those dynamic G1 files are, what um, Dynair basically creates, or uh, creates, those files are this here written out. Okay, so let me, what Dynair basically creates is, it creates a script, a function. Outputting, for instance, G1 as the first, or sorry, DF as the Jacobian. And let's call this numerical DF. What are the inputs? I don't know yet. And it basically does DF 
The first entry is this guy over here. The second entry is zero, fine. And we have the second one entry is right here and two, two. Okay, okay, okay. So what are the input arguments? Well, I do need X, I do need Y, I do need alpha, I do need beta. Let's save this, num df. Let's go back to our little script here. Okay, so I have df now here as a symbolic variable and also written as a script. And if you followed this exercise with the symbolic toolbox, you can substitute expressions in this df. I want to substitute for x and y and alpha and beta some numbers. Um, I don't know. Maybe x should be 1, y should be 2, alpha should be 0 0.3, beta should be 0 0.9. And if I execute this, the symbolic toolbox is going to compute this still exactly. Okay, and I want to have it numerical now. Double is basically tells you use double precision. I'm not gonna, well, how, how exact a number is for a computer. And if I run this, you see that this is the actual Jacobian. But I also have created the script file. So it should be the same if I just run this function of and enter the same numbers. Who Give me this gives me the same numbers. We can also change the format to maybe long. See a bit more of the decimal points. Compare this to this equation here. It is exactly the same. Now, why do we need, um, or why is it useful to not use the symbolic toolbox all the time, but to have those functions that at, at the heart do the same thing, right? Numerically, they compute the same thing. And this is due to time and memory. If you have huge models, those symbolic variables, they take up quite um, the space in your memory. And evaluating them might take really long. So let's do this a hundred time. Simply re-evaluate and let's time it. Tick tock. Now the video platform, but MATLAB command. And not even, let's not even print it out. Let's just run this, okay? It takes a second to use the symbolic toolbox to evaluate this again and again and again and again and again, a hundred times. Let's do the same with the script files. Zero point one seconds, and this might be not a huge thing for you, but for more complicated models, this is huge. Okay, so this is one way. We're not losing any. We're not. We're not losing any accuracy, not at all. Okay, so those are the exact same numbers, right? Because we used the symbolic toolbox to create this file. And then we do double precision and those will give you the exact same numbers, but having those script files simply um, is faster. Now, why do I need those script files? This was the Jacobian DF. I can do the same with the actual model equations. And then I, can, I might be, I don't know what the steady state is and I want to compute the steady state. The steady state is a fixed point. So find the X and the Y that will give me 
that f is zero for all uh, rows. So I can use, for instance, a numerical optimizer for this. And a numerical optimizer is basically just a fancy uh, try and error. Try out an x, try out a new x, a new x, a new x and y, a new x and y, maybe a million x and y's until it gives you the best one, the best meaning that f is the closest to zero as it can get. So you need to evaluate f a million times. And if it takes a minute to evaluate f once, it will take a, mi a million seconds. If it just takes 0 0.01 seconds, this is much, much better. Okay, so for all those computations, we will actually require, um, or we will use those script files. Denya creates those script files, and we, we will do this as well. And this is what is actually call, called pre-processing. So let's, let's start. So th this is basically um, the end goal, okay? Very, um, very rough what I want to, do, to let the computer do. I, I don't want to copy and paste this into files and then do a manual transformation here. I want, I want to let the computer do this because this is less error prone. If the computer can do this for me, I'm fine. And this is why Daner helps you a lot, but in a sense to understand what really happens, I think it's still valuable if we pre-process the RBC model ourselves. Okay, so let's uh, do this. What does Dynair do? So first of all, we need, let's clear everything, clear all, nothing in the wor workspace anymore. We need to declare variables, right? So we need to define what my variables are. So I had a Y, I had a C, I had a K, I had an L, I had an A, I had an R, a W, and investment. Quick, quick note here, um, I'm using double quotes in MATLAB, you can also use single quotes for strings. Strings are just names of stuff. The beauty about double quotes is that it creates a special object, a, a string array, mm -hmm. meaning that those strings can have different lengths. Okay, so it, it's able to distinguish this. So this, this is why I'm using double quotes here. If I'm simply using strings, uh, I actually use the single quote. And we have our exogenous names, right? And this would be apps A. I would have my par parameter names. And let's count how many endogenous I have. Endo number, exo number. This might be useful information later on. And how many param parameters I have. Now, I need to declare or the model equations, right? And if I do this with MATLAB, I'm putting everything on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side as a model equation, because I'm interested in the residual of a model equation, okay? And I'm calling this basically, let's call this model equation. The first entry is, what was the first entry, uh, UC? minus beta times use, that was what I did in Dynair, right? UC plus one times one minus delta plus R plus one. This is what we did in Dynair. Let's try this. MATLAB does not know what UC is. So I need to, of course, declare it. Okay, so here, declare endogenous variables as symbolic variables. And you do this with the sims command, I have uc here, for instance. Hmm, okay, let's do this. What is beta? Ah, of course, I also need to declare parameters as symbolic. 
So I would need to do since beta rerun. Oh, delt, of course, I need to also declare delt. R, no oh dear, also R. So let's do another since R. Huh, this went through, but let's have a look at this. So what MATLAB is now working with is UC minus beta times UC, but this should be UC plus one. Well, plus one MATLAB code is just the one, the number one. And the same here. So in a way I need to start distinguishing variables. So I need to think about, well, this is, maybe I shouldn't call this just UC, maybe I should call this current. And then I would need to declare current here and R current here as well. The plus one, maybe I need to call this something else, maybe forward. And then I have R forward here as well. So if I do this now, I need to redefine UC forward. No R forward. So let's have a look. This looks better. Okay. So, and I don't have only just one equation, I have quite the many equations. And I would need to not only have current variables, but I might also have t minus one variables. So I would need to call this, if you don't like back, you can call it whatever. This is just for me, um, r back. And also sometimes I have steady state variables. Some variables I need to evaluate this even though I don't have the steady state numerically yet, but in my model equations, we have the steady state. So in a sense, a variable can have four different versions. It can be T minus one, T, T plus one. Might be also T plus two, but then I uh, yeah, would need to think how to handle this. Uh, but actually, it's sufficient to only have back and curve and forward and the steady state. So let me do this. So for each of the variables I have here, you see is actually also something that is not a real variable. It's just a helper variable. So I, I'm, I'll get rid of that. So I have a number, uh, a name list here. So let me use this with y and then with c. Okay. I hope you see how tedious this is. But this is what Daniel does. Okay, it declares variables as symbolic because it then treats model equations as symbolic and then computes Jacobian of that and writes this out to script files. Nevertheless, let's, let's continue doing this, okay? Maybe not the most fun, but this is what researchers have to do if they are not using Dynair for their research. There you go. Now, you could speed this up with a for loop, for instance. I mean, we have a name for the endogenous, right? Let's loop over the names and let's simply run the since command, create new strings with add underscore stst, underscore back, etc. So I could have written this in like three lines for any number of endo uh, endo names with a for loop. 
Okay, so this would be, of course, one can do this a bit um, nicer. So if we did this with endogenous, we of course need to do this as well with exogenous variables. But for exogenous variables, we don't have to distinguish between current forward. We're only interested in them at period t because expectation of t plus one is of course zero for those variables. And then I also have my parameters right here. So let's also have them. All right. And then what we did in our mode file was we created a couple of real model equations and a couple of helper variables and helper functions. So let's just do this exactly the same. So a helper function was that this is gamma times C current, the inverse of that. And the same with forward, but then I have C forward. And I have UL cur minus psi. Minus one. So those were all auxiliary. No error, very good. Um, and the marginal products given the Cup Douglas production function divided by L curve. Oh no, that was uh, F. Uh, no, this would be K back. Y curve, K back. Minus alpha times y curve divided by L back. And also marginal costs was always one in this model. And then we started actually with the model equations. So this was the first model equation. The second one. was that wages are equal to the, um, the marginal rate of substitution between working, uh, between labor and consumption. So minus, minus, this would actually be then a plus, UL curve divided by UC curve. capital accumulation equation, the aggregate demand, Y needs to be equal to consumption plus investment, putting everything on the left-hand side. So there is a minus C curve minus investment curve. The production function, the Cobb Douglas one, labor demand, capital demand, then productivity,
So you really have to be careful with the minus and plus signs. Again, this is putting everything on the left-hand side of the equation. And I think that's it, right? I hope. Let's see if size of endo remains one equal equal size of model equations one print cool else error number of equations not equal to number of variables. They may be not equal and I don't need to cool. If it's not equal to each other, then we should get an error. This is something that they also checks. Do you have enough variables? Um, and enough model equations. In principle, you need for a system, for a system of equations to be, um, remember math, if you have a system of equations with five equations, you can solve for five variables uniquely. If you have more, then this is not uh, a unique solution. If you have less, then you might get lucky or because equations are redundant, but most of the times, uh, yeah. So we need a square system. All right, those are the model equations. So this is more or less something that we would also need to do in a mode file. Now, what Dynea does um, is to look into your model equations, which variables do you actually use? So we've declared everything at t minus one, at t, at t plus one and steady state. Um, but for computational reasons, it might be maybe useful to get a name of the variables that you really use. And this will be later on important because some variables are more important for say a, a certain solution method than other variables. Um, for instance, A, this is very important, technology. This is where the shock hits. This is driving the whole dynamic here. There's only one shocks and then there's a shock hitting the technology productivity. So this is a very important variable. This is what we later on will call a state variable. Other variables like why. I mean, this is basically just a definition of capital and labor and technology. This is more a definition, definitionary variable. Interesting to have a look at why, but in terms of computational, from a computational perspective, this is not an important variable. I can create this, recreate this variable very easily once I have the values of all the other variables. So there might be a distinction. And I don't have maybe t plus one for y. Okay, so, and what Dynair does is it creates a so-called lead lag incidence matrix for dynamic variables. So how does this incidence, you can find this matrix in Dynair's M underscore structure. Um, maybe let's, let's run this, Dynair RBC nonlinear. So just have a look how this looks like, M underscore lead lag incidence. This is what the matrix looks like, okay? Huh. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Huh. Let's have a look what what this does. Let's recreate this. Okay. So uh, let me again clear all. Run my whole code. Now, first of all, initialize this. This had three rows, and um, actually, I'm going to do this a bit differently. Um, I'm going to look at the transpose of this matrix. It has three columns here and the number of variables as the rows, all zero. 
Now I want to look what are the actual variables that I use. And there is a nice command from the symbolic toolbox, simbar, which gives you all, which simply looks in the vector in the array and simply prints out, stores the names of all the symbolic variables that we declared. Pretty good. Okay, so I have now all the names. And now I'm going through the names. Let's run the for loop. And now I want to check whether the name that I find, the A, whether it is the T, it is used as T minus one, as T and T plus one, or just as T, or just as T plus one and T, or only as T minus one and T, or only as T. I want to count this. This is why I have three columns here. Okay, so if this variable is used as a T minus one, I will put a one in the first column. If it is used as a T, I will put a one in the second column. If it is used as a T plus one, I will use, uh, I put a one in the third column. Okay, so we have to basically now check. There are many ways to do this, but um, Let's keep it simple with many if and for statements uh, to also get ourselves a bit more experience in programming. So there is in a has function, has the used bars. Now I want to check whether it has, for instance, a bag. And this will print me, yeah, it does at position two, four, six, seven. Okay, does it also have cur? Yeah, there's also cur right here, position some, whatever. Does it also have a forward? Nah, no forward in there. Okay, so with this has function, I can basically check whether this variable has cur, back, or. So let's check whether it has a bag, but I want to run a loop. So I'm creating a string here, a new one. Let's do, I have the names here and the name. Let's take the J name. Okay, so let's start J equals one. And the names J, Y, and this will create me a string why back? Ah, actually it's a one by two string array. I need to join them. And there are many commands that, they, that can do this. For instance, the string cut command. Um, sure, there, I should put a comma here. So the string cut command is something that I can use. This is a string and this is a string. And this should give me Y back. Cool. There is no Y back. Okay. So, but if there is, so if any of that command, if there is a one in here, if any, I'm gonna put a lead lag incidence for this variable. In the first column, I will put a one here. And now let's copy this over. I'm looking for current variables. And if there is a current variable in the second column, I'm gonna put a one in there. And lastly, for forward one. Let's run this. Oh. Let's see. Okay. I have many zeros and ones. So, how do you read this lead lag incidence table? 
let's uh, display this a bit nicely. So let's display this as a table, the transpose of that. The variable names are the endogenous ones and the row names are t minus one, t and t plus one. So this is just me displaying this matrix a bit nicely. K. In my model equations, I can find k at t minus 1 and t, but not at t plus 1. In my model equations, I can find l at 1, uh, l t minus 1, and why do I have t l t minus 1? Where is l back? Huh, this is wrong. L curve, there you go. Okay. And this is the lead lag incidence variable. This is nice because I have a list here of all the variables used in my model. So, um, and now I can distinguish a couple of variables. And this is also what Dynair does. And this will later on help us to make our computations even faster. First of all, we have something that is called a static variable. This appears only at cur, but not at back, not at forward. So having a look at this lead lag incidence matrix, static variables have a zero here, a one here, and a zero here. So Y is a static variable. L is a sta static variable. W and investment is also a static variable. So let's find the static variables. Those are the endo names. Um, no, I mean, so let's have a look if the lead lag incidence, if I can find zero, one, zero in this lead lag incidence matrix in the rows of this matrix. Let's see what this can do. Provides me a list that's the first, yeah, the fourth, the fifth, uh, and the last two. So I can use this vector to get the names. Now, those are my static names Y, L, W, and investment. Then there are also um, what we call predetermined or purely predetermined variables. Those are extremely important variables. They drive the dynamics. They appear at back, but not at forward. Might be also at curve, doesn't matter. Important is they are, appear at back, but not at forward. So possibly also at curve. And how do I check those? Copy the line. Those are endo predetermined names, endo names, lead lag incidents. Appear at back, but not at forward. So let's focus on only on the first and the third column, so all rows, first and third column, and I want a one and a zero. And this should 
give me that capital and technology are my predetermined variables. Those are extremely important variables. We will actually call them state variables later on. This is where these variables drive the dynamics in my model. Okay, so again, I'm focusing lead like incidence matrix. I only care about T minus one and T plus one. And this is what I then call purely predetermined variables. What is, what about the other way around? Purely forward looking variables. They appear at forward, but not at back. So here I would switch around the zero and one, that's it. And I will call this endo forward mate. Consumption and the interest rate. Okay, so this is where the expectations are important. And there's a, there's a forward looking variable. And lastly, I also have mixed variables that appear all the time. Uh, not all the time, that it can appear both at forward and at back. Okay, so let's call those mixed variables appear at forward and at back. So I want a one one here. Those are then oh, the mixed variables and the mixed names. There are no good. And now we also create something what in Dynair notation and what Dynair, if you look at the manual, um, calls so called dynamic variables. Okay, so the dynamic names are basically the variables that we actually have in our model. So I have K back, I have A back, I have Y cur, I have C cur, K cur, et cetera, and up to R forward. Those are the dynamic variables, those that actually occur in my model. Okay, dynamic variables which variables are in my model equation. So lead lag incidence matrix. In the first column, those are the back variables. So whenever there is a one, I want to get the names here. So endo names. Okay, this looks good. And I want to join this with a bag. So string cut, what we just did, bag, underscore bag, K bag and A bag. Okay, so those were the bag variables. Good. Then, Let's use dot, 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 so I can continue my command in the next line. Copy and paste. So in the second column, those are the curve variables. And in the third column, those are the forward looking variables. And here I can close the command. Now I should provide this as a vector. Those are my dynamic variables, 12. Those variables actually are actually in my model. I could, I could create now dynamic vars, make sure that those are symbolic dynamic names. Okay, and I have now them as symbolic variables. And I also have my exogenous vars. I want to have the symbolic with exo names. 
Okay. This is just me making sure that I have them declared as symbolic. And now I can do stuff like computing the static model equations. This is useful for when you want to compute the steady state, for instance. The steady state is, remember on paper, we deleted t minus one, t and t plus one. So let's do this here as well. Let's go into our model equations and delete curve and delete back and delete forwards and replace it with the steady state variables. Ah, so maybe I need also to have dynamic bars steady state. Oh, first names, let's do this. Dynamic names steady, not steady, steady state names. Let's do it like that. So I'm simply copying the whole code here and I'm simply using ST, 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 ST. So what does this do? I have now dynamic names. Those are the names in the correct order with back and curve and stuff like that. And the steady state name, there's always a steady state. And then I'm also creating dynamic bar steady state, symbolic dynamic steady state names. Okay. And now we can actually do model equations static. We can substitute, there's the subs command, my model equations. And I'm gonna substitute my dynamic variables by the dynamic vars steady state. And this is what then the model equations look like, okay? The dynamic model equations, they have all those forward and per and back variables. The static ones don't. And I could also do like simplify. So maybe the, the map toolbox can even simplify this expression or expand this expression or do do some other uh, manipulation on these variables. Okay, so, but so these equations need to be fulfilled for my steady state. So if I have a steady state for y, I, I include it here and there, et cetera, et cetera. Those equations all need to be zero for a steady state, for instance. Okay, those are the static model equations. Let's also compute the static Jacobians. So let's create again a name for the variables, endo and steady state. Those should be symbolic variables and I want to have my endo names and I want to add steady state. Okay. And now let's call this static G1 because Dynair, it is also called G1, the Jacobian of the model equations static with respect to the, this is the Jacobian matrix. And I'm very happy that MATLAB can compute derivatives because when I do this on paper, there are at least 10 errors that I do, and I do another two errors when I try to write them down on computer code. So this is the static G1. When there is a static, there is also something like dynamic. So compute the dynamic Jacobian. And the dynamic G1 matrix is the Jacobian of my actual dynamic model equations with respect um, to my dynamic 
variables, but also to my exogenous variables, uh, dynamic bars. Okay, so this is then the Jacobian of the model equation with respect to all the dynamic model variables and to the last column is with respect to epsilon. Of course, there's only in the last equation, there's the epsilon. That's why we have a minus one here. And now, remember what I wanted to do. So we've somehow managed to create symbolic variables. We managed to create model equations and we managed to create computer Jacobian. Now, what I want to do is I want to um, write this out in a function like that. And this uh, is a bit, yeah, a bit tedious to, to do that, but I've just did a nice little helper function that I want to reuse. I will upload the, all the codes for you, for you to use. Now, don't worry about this. This is just a function that I've just written uh, two hours ago, I guess, which let's see what it does. Let's simply see what it does. Um, it's printing stuff to files. Okay, that's, that's all it does with the fprintf command. I love the fprintf command, so this is why I like to do that. Okay, um, so write out to script files. And I have created a write out function and it has, I want to write out the static model equations. I want to call this RBC static resit. The output arguments should be called residual and this is a static file. I need dynamic names and endo names and exo names and param names. I hope that was it. Let's see what happened. I've created a file, RBC static resit, that has a correct heading function residual with the input arguments that I need a couple of comments, what happens. And if you have a look here, uh, this should not be sparse. It's, we didn't talk about sparse yet. Sorry, let's create it to zeros. Okay. So let's do it again. So what does this function do? It takes as input the steady state, the names of the variables. Uh, no, it actually just takes the steady state. Okay, so this is a vector, has eight entries, starting with y, c, etc. It takes, gives you a vector with numerical values for your shocks and parameters, numerical values for your parameters. And then it creates the static model equation. Okay, the first, first entry was equal to that. So this is basically model equations static one one. Yeah, exactly. It just prints out into the script file. Okay, and static model equations one two one is this equation right here. And three one, four one, six one, seven one, eight one, etc. If the entry is zero, I'm initializing everything with zero. So, and then I'm only focusing on the non zero entries. Um, for very large models, and if you look at Jacobian matrices, for instance, uh, you have many zeros, and then this saves a bit of code. Okay, now I have script files for the static equation okay and I also want to have 
the dynamic model equations. Um, Oh, now let's keep the static G1. RBC static G1. So we should output G1 and also true dynamic. Okay, this gives me that. And and I'll also write to write out the model equations. Obviously, dynamic who is it? Let's call it this way. So I'd also call it residual. This is not a static. And then let's simply copy and paste that. And then dynamic G1. Okay, and then we're finished. Now we see dynamic G1. This should be called G1. Okay. So let's hope no error. Okay. Static G1, dynamic G1, dynamic resit. Let's have a look into Dynair's plus folder. Dynamic resit. Static resit. Those are, in a sense, the exact same files. Let's have a look what, for instance, the static resit of Dynair, what it looks like. Um, it also has as inputs y as the endogenous variables, x the exogenous, and parameters. It also has some other stuff, but that is not important. And here it basically creates the static file residuals, then the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, how does our static file look like? Eight entries, okay. And the static resit file also here has eight entries. Good. So the static resit file is the model equations all get rid of the back, the curve, the forward. That is the static model equations. The Jacobian of those static is then called static G1. Okay, so this is um, that. Dynamic model equation is then dynamic resit are your model equations, the dynamic model equations. That's it, the dynamic model equations, right? The dynamic G1 matrix is the Jacobian of the dynamic model equations with respect to dynamic variables and the exogenous variables. So now comes the, the test whether we have done it correctly. Um, let's run Dynair RBC non-linear, no temp terms. Let's recreate Dynair's files, okay. Now, um, I have to get, that. I have to get the dynamic variables in Dynair. Let's have a look using the lead lag incidence, which variables are actually the dynamic ones. Ys is the steady state of the endogenous variable. So what I did here is I've run Dynair. I, uh, Dynair computes the steady state because I need a point uh, where I can evaluate the steady state. Okay, so for instance, this, these are then the dynamic model variables in steady state. These are the exogenous variables in steady state, they're all zero. And this is the command to evaluate Dynair's dynamic file to get residuals and G1 for the dynamic or static variant. And this is how we do this. And if we have a look at 
we compare them, they should be the same. So many zeros. Okay, the one to third equation and the tenth variable, something off. Okay, I have my dynamic names. The tenth variable, IV curve. Which equation was it? Third? Third equation. Let's have a look at our model equations, what we did. Um, yeah, there should be a minus. Yeah. Okay, so if I rerun this again, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. There should be all zeros. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah. First equation, the 11th variable, and something here. No, actually not. Have a look at the difference. This is 10 to the power of minus 15. So 15 zeros after the comma sign. So this is pretty much numerical equivalent. Okay, so. This is pre-processing in MATLAB of such a model, what Dynair does. And those script files will be, or will become very important when we start simulating the model, but also when we do steady state computations, which we will do tomorrow. Okay, we will, um, I hope to show you how a numeric, like last week we had the questions, where's actually the difference if I use init vowel or if I steady state model block? What is numerical optimization? This is what we will do tomorrow then, okay? Since we have now a function that we can start evaluating the static residual file, we can now hit a numerical optimizer on this function and try to find the steady state. This is what we'll do tomorrow. Yeah, have a good, have a good day, bye-bye.